Mabuhay pageant fans! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey Adam G! How are you guys? Kamusta na kayo? Well, before I proceed with today's content, I just want to thank you all for the great feedback that I have been getting from my interviews with John Nadahar, Marvin Robowitz, and Steffi Aberasturi a few days ago. I am just so happy to be given this platform to do what I love doing in, the, in this uh, pageant landscape, which is doing interviews and speaking of interviews guys ito na nga i know you guys are still not over about the interview challenge of the remaining 50 contestants of the miss universe philippines organization last night diba and sa totoo lang ang bilis talaga ng mga pangyayari it uploaded a two-part video of all the contestants and immediately May resulta na kaagad, the organization handed down its verdict afterwards. And sa totoo lang, I was initially hesitant to come out with this video as the top 7 have already been announced. But I noticed some of you are asking my opinion on some girls who you also think deserve to be part of this winner's list. So, which girls also stood out for me in this round apart from the top 7? Well, you better stick around for it. So guys, before I enumerate my list here, I just want to commend MUP for how it did its format for this specific challenge last night. I like how they threw two different questions and one same question for all girls. Diba? Nakakatawa. And especially for the third question, nakakatawa as if we could finally gauge each one of them based on their quick thinking and grace under pressure. Also, ay salamat sa Diyos. There was no fan voting for a change, which I think was a breath of fresh air as it finally, you know, these organizations finally decided to get a group of people from the pageant and fashion industries to be online judges for this task. And nakakatuwa talaga. And as you can see right now, the results was so different compared to the results of the previous online challenges. And I really welcome this development because it gave other contestants their time or moment to shine. And I couldn't be any happier with the results. Ang daming mga contestants who we haven't been noticing for the past month shown in this round at nakipagsabayan talaga sa mga frontrunners and if there's one thing this challenge is really telling us it's that this competition is still anybody's ballgame and each of these 50 contestants has what it takes to win this year's crown so let's start first with the top 7 winners okay let's start with Victoria Velasquez from Cavite the overall winner for this round mic drop this girl is really good talaga when it comes to interviews. I really like how Victoria gave very smart and substantial answers while remaining very calm and collected. She's very articulate and confident. And for a while, she really sounded like Demi Lane Peters and Charlene Com Gonzalez combined when she speaks. I know people might say the reason why she got miles ahead in this round is because of her upbringing abroad. But hello, not all native English speakers can speak articulate like VVV. This only goes to show that VVV is really well read and educated all her life so that she could easily so so she could easily formulate her thoughts in coming out with her answers. So she's so effortless here. So congratulations VVV. Well deserved win. Okay, let's go to number two, which is Sam Santa Maria from Paranaque. I think there should be no longer any justification why this girl's name is in this list. And natutuwa ako that she is also finally given her moment here. No doubt, Sam Santa Maria is an eloquent speaker through and through, as she can really express her thoughts cohesively in whatever question you ask of her. She's very natural and her choice of words are very refreshing. Parang Nicole Cordovez lang itong babaeng itong magsalita. Very casual talaga and expressive, except that there is a camera in front of her so yeah good job Sam and now let's go to our third girl who is Ayin Abernos from San Juan you know what I so expected this girl to ace this challenge and boy did she run away the hell out of it you know as you can see this is really her alley she was clearly having fun in this challenge. Her years of being an English teacher and podcaster have really served well here in this 
virtual challenge, ang sarap talaga sa tenga pakinggan ng boses niya with her tone, accent, and intonation. But other than the obvious, I just love how she gave very short yet powerful answers in each question. No doubt, Ayn Bernos is the best speaker of this year's MUP. Okay, at number four is Isabel de los Santos from Makati. Wow, this girl is really a revelation in this round. It's my second time to notice her and she is proving why she should be part of the official 30 soon. I am so happy that the judges got to see her wisdom in this challenge as I feel she is really answering her questions based on her profession as an HR practitioner. You feeling mo na she is compartmentalizing and organizing her thoughts very well as she answers her questions questions where you could see her when you could see and get her train of thought until she drives home her points i like it talaga for me it's very refreshing yung nakakatuwa nag-iisip muna siya for a bit how to answer muna before answering hr na hr boss talaga ang datingan niya so mabuti na napakinabangan niya ito for this round so good job isabel and number five is megan dial from bukidnon wow and she is another revelation i feel this girl is so underrated the first thing i notice about her when i watch her is her strong screen presence ang lakas ng rehistro ni megan on screen napansin niyo yon but she makes more impact when she finally answers her questions with her straightforwardness and clarity of her words and thoughts considering hindi siya nagpo-pause pause pause in between napansin niyo yon and you know what for me ako lang batong nakapansin din she also strikes me as those color of women women of color in miss usa nailing their answers in their top five ganun siya for me ka confident even if she is saying she was freaking out inside pala sa sobrang kaba hindi halata ah ang galing niya and it really helps that she has work abroad and so she is so at ease in communicating her thoughts well which was so evident here in this interview she was really good so good job megan as well at number six is Bea Luigi Gomez from Cebu City. You know what? This girl is so pleasing in the eyes. Not just with her pink off-shoulder dress, but also with her very calm and direct to the point answers. No flowery words or beating around the bush. You know what I ko sa kanya when Bea was answering those questions. Those answers were very short, yet very substantive. I, I could really sense that Bea could be the dark horse in this year's MUP. At number 7 is Simona Dean Bornilia from Marinduque. Hello, Patch Magtanong! Is that you? You know what? I just love Simone, Simone's brand of beauty here in Miss Universe Philippines. It's as if her eyes and smile are talking. Very magnetic. Napansin niyo yun. But above all, this girl is so well composed with her answers. This girl makes sure that she injects a bit of her background and personality in every answer she comes out with. Especially when she talks about being raised by her two gay dads. I thought that's so interesting and refreshing. Nakukuha niya yung attention ko. So yeah, I really, really like this girl. I can't wait to get to know her more if she makes it to the official list soon. Okay, now let's go to the other girls who I also think did a great job in this round as well. In no particular order, number 8, Cristel Abello from Maclan. If only the winner's list was top 10 instead, I really believe this girl is really part of it. Christelle really aced this round with her sponta spontaneous and very genuine answers. She is so genuine and it reflects on her answers. What I love about Christelle more here is that she is not trying too hard to impress us. She is just showing us her authentic self, class, breathing, and full of wisdom. Relate na relate ka talaga sa mga sagot niya. At number 9 is Mirhan Hippolytos, Angeles City. You know what? I have been hearing a lot of great feedback about this girl and I can finally see it why. This girl is so effortless in public speaking. Very natural and eloquent. Very confident pa. And her answers were all very clear, simple, and relatable. No pretenses talaga. She just speaks from the heart. I can't wait to interview this girl very, very soon. At number 10 is Maureen Rabowitz from Pangasinan. You know what, guys? I just love this girl. Maybe I am biased as I was able to interview her here on my platform. 
last night. I just love the way she talks. She is bubbly, honest, and gorgeous. She also knows how to project her voice, napansin niyo yan, and how she phrases her sentences very well. But what I love Maureen here on this challenge is that she gives meaty and concise answers, whether when she talks about herself or how she wants to use her platform effectively. Her answers are very on point. But coming from the heart. Partida ah, she is only 23 years old pa lang sa lagay na yan. How much more if this girl goes back to school in the near future? Next is Kisses de la Vin from Masbate. You know what? I can't believe this girl is only 22 years old as I find most of her answers very deep. Grabe talaga sumagot itong batang to. Very smart and sensible. Even at only 22, she knows how to answer her questions with so much conviction. Her first answer about pageant stereotypes is really refreshing as you can feel she is not rehearsed. And her second answer about a Shakespeare quote gives you that vibe that she is well read. Her answers, sa totoo lang, really completely belie her age. If I have to nitpick lang, very minor. I wish she could work on her voice projection as it's quite, I notice, it's quite monotonous and that she should lessen her interviewer mention as I feel it's quite redundant if you keep mentioning about your interviewer's name. Imagine if she could have used those initial 10 seconds on ending her third answer with a bang para hindi siya maabutan ng bell, di ba? Or maybe I am just equating her monotony of her voice to her politeness. But overall, Kisses really did great here in this challenge. Next is Chela Falconer from Misamis Oriental. You know what? I expected this girl to ace this as I feel she is a pageant contessera all her life. There is no doubt Chela speaks very well and can answer any question coming her way. But if there is one to nitpick lang, maybe she could, she could deliver her answer with warmth and a smile to connect with her audience. I understand she is under time constraint here in this challenge. Pero, diba? That's why... Probably it explains why she is speaking faster. But maybe if she could speak a bit slow, maybe she could connect more with her audience. I think this is the only one missing. Next is Michelle Angela Okal from Shargao. Wow! Surprise! This is my first time to notice this girl and I just find this girl very sweet in her demeanor, yet she speaks very well. Her answers are very relatable as she talks about her skills, views, and resources. Her choice of words are very simple so she, you could really understand this girl very clearly. For me, she is really such a pleasant surprise. And next is Nefelin Dacuno from Tacloba. And you know what? This, is gr this girl is also another pleasant discovery in this round. For me, she has one of the best intro answers as she took her sweet time to explain her name. Yeah, Nefelin, de ba? Yung pala may say, based pala sa science yung name niya. But more than that, I love how she is such a natural and charming speaker in her questions. She seems to have a fun personality. Alam mo yun, the type that you would like to hang out with as a friend on in a coffee shop. Yeah, that's how she strike me here in this round. So yeah, I love her here. Next is Jedi da Corinihana from Davao del Sur. You know what? I can't believe no one is talking about this girl. I think Jedi that deserves to be part of this list to us. She is too she is so refreshing with her candid and relatable answers. Ang daming hugot ng babae to, yet I am amazed at how she still comes up with ve with very short yet concise answers. Parang ang sarap kakwentuhan nito sa coffee shop din. So yeah, I want to get to know more about this girl. Sana. And next is Katrina Dimaranan from Tagig. You know what, guys? There is no doubt that this girl loves to talk and it was very evident on the way she conducted herself during this interview. She's very bubbly, natural, and spontaneous. She's so sassy to the point that she came across as too strong and too Im intimidating while others here in this challenge were, were very calm and soft-spoken. It only goes to show talaga that how confident Katarina is as a speaker, especially when she was asked about divorce and political correctness. I think she really acquitted herself here very well as she was not able to alienate both sides of the issue. Napansin niyo yon? 
feeling ko talaga alam mo yun, the organization gave her the hardest questions probably she because of her being a front runner but you know what, of the two questions asked i especially love how she related political correctness to canceling cancel culture as i myself also favors it i figure this girl has balls grabe so this is the type of girl na pag pinadala natin sa miss universe hindi tayo kakabahan sa Q&A and if for anything we might probably be worried about the opposite which is her over enthusiasm which reflected on her introduction i feel she was so hyper on her intro to the point of to the point of alam mo na yon on information overload as there were parts there i wish she did not say like her connection with Justin Bieber which I feel is not empowering for a Miss Universe Philippines candidate like her. I understand that you know she wants to talk a lot of things within a short time frame but I hope she learns to make her answers more inspiring so that she can appeal and win more hearts of her audience. And last but not the least is Steffi Arabelasturi from Cebu province. You know what? I just love this girl. She's very relatable and humble. As well, despite her sheer beauty, what I love about Steffi is that she is so spontaneous in her interview and is not coming across as pageant patty with her answers, even though she has been a pageant contestera all her life. Which, sa totoo lang, I really find very refreshing. It's as if hindi siya nagpakain sa sistema. And in the, in this interview round, you can see her passion in everything that she does, whether being a quindera or being an island girl. I especially love when she said about people taking advantage of the disadvantages of social media as I feel she is speaking from the heart. Very, very sincere talaga sumagot si Steffi. But if there is anything I have to nitpick, I hope she learns to give her answers with strong endings so that it will have more impact to us. Pero overall, ang saya-saya panoorin ni Steffi. Pag ini-interview siya, katulad ng in- yung i-interview ko sa kanya noon, ang saya-saya lang. Nakatawa lang ako, nakasmile lang ako all throughout sa kanya. So there you go guys! What do you think about my thoughts on these girls who nailed this round? Does it match yours? Actually, guys, ang tami nilang magagaling talaga dito sa round na to. And it really pains me now that I just realized ang dami nilang masasayang na girls because they are all competing for just one crown. But I guess this is this what makes this whole competition more exciting. Everyone is stepping up to his game and no one is letting up. So, good luck to all the remaining 50 girls in the competition. Sana, sana talaga mag-align ang mga stars individually sa inyo next week. Alright guys, see you on my next video. Bye!